everybody. Oh my goodness, it's um, late. It's gone 11. I'm still in my pyjamas because I've been sitting here for two hours working on my laptop and my social media um, and Instagram doing work for Socks on the Beach, setting up the PayPal, the, okay, right, the money pool account for the vlog, for, Bill, for Bill's school, and copying that over to Instagram, and blah, blah, blah. And Gary and I also had the most interesting conversation about tea bags, because <laughs> he watched the vlog this morning, and we ended up looking, and he went and had a look at, um, looked up for himself about the tea bags. He argued that um, they don't use the dregs in tea bags. So he has corrected me, and I will put this out there, um, he told me all the technical stuff that he found out, but basically tea bags are considered to be secondary flavour wise to loose leaf tea because of the manufacturing process. So they use a manufacturing process called CPC, CRC, something like that. Anyway, and it's cut, the two C stand for cut and crush. I'm not sure what the other stand for. And because the tea bags get so mullered in the machinery, uh, the tea leaves, that's when they lose they lose a lot of their flavour. So actually, yes, loose leaf tea is treated differently um, and therefore considered to have a better flavour. We then had a long discussion about um, speediness and the fact that tea bags are quick and much easier than tea leaves and then we had uh, went on to talk about um tea strainers and tea diffusers and the speed of things and he was saying because he works in an office environment that they you know no time to um make tea and let it brew and then have to strain it and blah 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 but then i did point out about the diffuser cups that you could get um so you know it's to, you know it's it's stimulating our conversation as much as anything so hopefully it's giving you food food for thought um today I, i'm gonna go and get dressed the plan today is to do some tidying i'm in today uh, i have some weaving to do later and then i need to do a bit of reading up on some other bits and pieces to share with you and i will also give you details about the money pool for those of you who want to support me or support uh, Bill's school. That's it for now. Uh, I'm not going to waffle on much longer because for a start I look like I've been pulled through a bush backwards um, and I need to go and get myself sorted for the rest of it. Okay, do you remember this was my chair? Under there is a honey pup. Honestly, she is such a nester, I think. Oh, no, is that? He's a little paw. Oh, and he's a little nose. He's a little nose. Shall we have a look? Shall we see who's got herself under my hand crocheted blanket? <gasps> there she is. Oh, baby girl, look. And this time she genuinely has got herself under there. She is a tinker. Do you know what? It's two o'clock. Oh, my head and my face. I'm really, really cold. So I've got two jumpers and two pairs of trousers on. And I'm just not feeling it today. Do you have days like that? I think it's probably because um, I spent so long on the computer doing all my sort of admin -y work. I've set up. Um, set up the money pool fund for Bill's school. So that's really good and needed doing. Took me a little bit to do. I've put a linked um, thing on my Instagram profile, which is more messing around on technology. Then I had to organize some stuff for Socks on the Beach. I think I've already said all this, um, but basically my mind now is, is custard and I'm feeling very cold and very pathetic and don't feel like doing anything. I was going to take the dogs out, but it is pouring hard and blowing and windy. And can, can you see honey over there? Where is she? Look. And Henry's. Oh, you can't quite see him. Oh, there he is. Look. 
they're like, Mom, take us out. I can't, I'm too cold. So again, confessing my sins, I'm not going to take them out just yet. I'm going to go and have a hot bath instead. I used to listen to a lot of Fly Lady, um, or read the Fly Lady emails and things. I haven't done for, <coughs> excuse me, for a while now. But one of the things she said is if you're having a bad, or if you have a bad start to the day or a, a not good start to the day, um, then just start the day again at whatever time you like. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. I shall go and, and have a nice soak in the bath, have a hot cup of tea, warm up a bit, and start my day again, because I've still got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've probably got another eight hours ahead of me, haven't I, till 10 o'clock-ish. So I can still be productive, just doesn't always have to be in the morning. There. There's my thing for the day. If you if you feel rubbish and don't do much in the morning, start again at lunchtime. Okay, so I have had my bath. I have started my day again. As you can see, I've got my plaits in. The reason I plait my hair is so that as it dries, it goes curly. Not because I think that this rocks, can we just say. I think I'm probably a little bit old for pigtails, but there you go. Um, I have just done my shopping list and fortunately, the Weight Watchers magazine that I'm using, oh, Teriyaki Chicken Salad, nice, has given me a whole week's worth of menu ideas with the shopping list down here. And actually, I don't often there's not often enough on there that I know that we're all going to like, but this week it looks good. So I have just done my shopping list from that, which is great. Emily's trying to get up on the worktop now. Um, so that's done. I have done a, a delivery, Sainsbury's will deliver, but they don't use plastic bags. And oh, I hate going to the supermarket. So every couple of weeks I do a Sainsbury's online delivery and then what I'm going to try and do over the next little while is get into the habit of going to the local farm shop. But because I don't go out that way much, it seems a bit counterintuitive driving out there, especially to pick up local produce when it's not always local either, is it? And um, they have to ship in some of the uh, veg and so on. But anyway, that's by the by. I've done the shopping order, so I feel a lot better about that. Um, now then, Something a bit brave, but not. many of you, if you watched my vlog last year, would have recognised, and actually I wore it, was wearing it this morning, wasn't I? My boxy. My lovely um, scrappy boxy that mum knit for me a few years ago. Um, pattern, obviously, by Hohi Locatelli. Um, now, I love this sweater. I wear it a lot. Um, it's not particularly flattering, but I love it. So, when I came to wash it last time, I had a bit of a, a bit of a mental kind of blip, shall we say, and I threw it in the washing machine. I don't, I don't know what made me do that. Um, although I do wash my hand knit socks in the washing machine, and then I, hang, I put them on the area to dry. I don't tumble dry them. And I think I was just thinking, oh, that can go in the washing machine. And after I put it in and turned it on, I started thinking, I don't think I've ever washed that before in the washing machine. I think it's normally a hand wash. Sure as eggs is eggs, it felt it. Now, not all of it felt it. So the main, because it was scrappy, uh, obviously the superwash sock yarn was fine, but clearly I used, or I gave mum some other yarns in here as well mostly most problematic ironically was the sleeve that's not ironic is it and bits oh gosh you can still see that i'm still pulling it out stretching it um the cuff or the very last band of the body there are one or two there are one or two felting is when um or shrinking 
is when all the tiny little hairs or scales on the individual yarn fibers uh, stand up on end. So if you think when you're cold, will your, your body hair stand up on end to keep you warm, to trap the heat? Well, when wool fibers are um, agitated or subject to a, a very rapid change of temperature, all the little um, scales, as I've said, stand up on end. That is then akin to trying to walk down Oxford Street on a busy Saturday with your umbrella up. Imagine all those umbrellas getting tangled up. And that is what happens when something felt. It's when all the scales grab onto each other and it might be a scale from over here on a bit of yarn and a scale from over here, but because it's being agitated, they, they contact and they get hooked in and the whole, the whole fabric just goes like that. That was really scientific, wasn't it? So anyway, I had a few of those. Now the things on the body are fine. Um, oh, incidentally, the superwash treatment of yarn is where they use either some sort of acid or other treatment to actually get rid of those scales on the wool. They actually either burn them off with acid or use chemicals on them to get rid of those scales, which is what makes it super wash, which means you can put it in the washing machine because those scales are no longer there. It's a very simplified version, but you get the gist. The worst hit were the sleeves, particularly the band here. Now, I can still wear it, but I'm not happy with it. And I thought, why not re-knit the sleeves? Um, I mean, for a start, this isn't obviously shrunk. This is how the sleeve's meant to be. This comes down to below my elbow now. I quite fancy making them a bit longer and in a different colour. So I thought, oh, I'm going to cut the sleeve off, basically, pick it up and knit a new sleeve, both sides. Now, I was going to pick up a knit, but these, the bit that's felted, are way too felted and tight. I can't here sorry there i can't get my needle in so i'm going to cut the entire sleeve off because those of you who've knit this will see the construction this is knit anyway and this sleeve is only picked up from this edge and then knit downwards so in theory if i cut off in the blue area i will be left with the original stitches to pick up off the sleeve does that sound logical what do you think I have my scissors. Should we do it? I think I'm going to do what they do in the hairdressers and just cut a bit off, not too close, before I then go in closer. I can't even get the scissors in. It's so felted so tightly. There we go. When I edit this, I should play dramatic music, shouldn't I? doing my sustainable challenge to be honest I keep looking at the wrong way at the camera sorry um, right what I'm gonna do now I've done that oh, the weather outside is awful okay actually can you can you see where that goes in in the purple that's where it's felted as well so that's section actually it's not for some reason that must be a decrease it's this white bit that's felted and again you can see i mean that's almost like solid boiled wool that middle bit am i banging on enough about this banging on that's my phrase of the day there you go i've got a really trendy cat sleeve boxy i'm going to pick away at the rest of it i'm not going to do it on film because i've probably talked enough and i also have decided that I am going to take one of the dogs out. I'm not going to take them both out because it's a bit of a tricky day to manage them both on the lead. I'll take one of them out and I will bring you up to speed later. Ah, uh, so I completely caved and brought both the dogs out. <laughs> it's horrible, but it's barely raining now, so 
Uh, it's not as bad. I have my lovely hat on. Mairead, thank you very much for that. And my crochet, crochet shawl. You can't really see it, but I am all tuckered up. Ew. And I come round to the floody corner, so I'll show you that when we get there. There we go. So there's the ditch, which is usually dry in the summer. Actually, the floody bit isn't too bad. Look at that. This is all just draining off the field. You can see through there. And yeah, there's Honey. Oh, Henry's through there. Can you see him? I'm quite sure he's going to be going to go in the water. Oh, there you go. Whoa! You see how deep that was? Come on then, we'll go this way. There you go, before and after. Ew, that's all I can say. You see him close up. It's not pretty. Oh, how cool and relaxed am I? <laughs> I thought I'd sit somewhere different just to, to sum up today. Um, plus, I was looking at my vlog yesterday and my face is like really big on the screen, so I thought I'd sit further back, make that look better. Um, yeah, funny old day, but uh, here we are at tea time. I have just made a ch vegetable chipotle chilli, put it in the Instant Pot, and that is now cooking, so that's 10 minutes away. Should probably think about having some rice or something with it. Don't know. The joy when I eat alone is that I can have completely vegetarian and Weight Watchers friendly, and I don't have to worry about packing it out with anything for the troops. So that's quite good. And then I am going to go and watch some TV tonight. Do some knitting because apart from my boxy, I haven't done any other knitting today. Incidentally, the news for the boxy is good. Um, the sleeve is looking ready to be picked up now, so I will work on that this weekend and I will give you updates of that. Um, little sustainability update then. So, obviously I haven't been out anywhere today, so it's been easy not to spend any money. And I wouldn't look online anyway. What I did this morning though, was I went through unsubscribing from a whole load of um, consumer email marketing emails um a lot of them that have just built up over the years that that fill my inbox all the time and i very rarely read them um obviously if i subscribe particularly to a knitting newsletter or something like that i read it but the rest of them you know the sales pitches oh, i don't want to know so i've unsubscribed to those i have also gone on and found a couple of places that do send me catalogues and you know uh, snail mail stuff which I've also unsubscribed from so hopefully that will be good not getting that through the mail. Um, the thing I wanted to just mention briefly about today and I always say briefly and I always go on for ages but today really is briefly is the waste that uh, occurs in coffee shops and cafes yeah there's Henry Come on then, come on, come on, come on then. Excuse me a sec, come on. He's wet and he's messy. Well, there you go. There, there. Okay, nice. Go to wash this splatter again. All right, don't fidget if you're gonna sit there. Or you can talk. Um, yeah, the way I was, do you remember, um, Day one on Wednesday, I went to Marks and Spencer's cafe and I ordered a toasted tea cake and I picked up a couple of the little butter packets because I didn't know that they it came with the tea cake. And then when they brought me the tea cake over, there were two more butter packets underneath the tea cake, obviously to try and melt them a little bit. Now, I only wanted two. Um, and then when I spoke to the young lady, the waitress who brought it over, I said to her, you know, what, what should I do about these? I don't want them. 
and she said, we can't take them back, they'll be thrown away. And of course that got me thinking, that really got me thinking because, you know, how many times do we take more things than we need? Especially things like the little UHT milk cartons, uh, the sugar things, um, things like butters, ketchup sachets, all of that. Once they're taken and they are on the table, they then just get thrown away if you don't use them. And that's appalling, isn't it? Because, um, I'm gonna put my hand up, I'm guilty of, not so much lately, but I'm really guilty of perhaps taking, you know, you don't wanna to have to get up and go and get more, let's face it to you, because we're all inherently lazy. Um, so, and it's the same with napkins, although personally I'm better with the paper napkins now. And some places like uh, Pret and other places do make a point of having a notice up saying, please don't take more napkins than you need because you end up with a pile on the table and you walk out and leave them there and then they're just going to the bin. So that's my little, my little thing today is that I'm gonna make sure in future when I go to a restaurant or just actually probably more coffee shops and cafes um, are, are more easy places to be guilty of this. I'm not gonna take more than I need. In fact, I'm gonna take less and if I have to get up and go and collect something else, then so be it. Um, but in particular with condiments and butters and all that sort of thing, then I'm going to endeavour not to leave anything on the table. Actually, at Marks and Spencer's, I, I brought the butter home because I couldn't bear to leave it there just to be thrown in the bin. And actually, real butter is a bit of a treat for me. So, and I said to the girls, well, I'll take it home then. She said, yeah, it's only going to be thrown away if you keep it here, if you leave it on the table. So there you go. Food for thought, almost literally, isn't it? Just be wary when you're out. And again, I'm sure you all are anyway, but if not, just, just think about the, the extra bits and pieces you pick up when you're out and then leave on the table because they cannot be put back into the system generally, I guess, due to uh, hygiene, health and safety and so on. Uh, on that note, I should say Tooley Pip. As I have said, I think a couple of times before, I've now set up the money pool for um, the fundraising effort I'm making for Bill's school. Um, it has already been contributed to, so thank you very much. I will put the link in the description box below in YouTube. Um, or if you missed that, then in the about section on YouTube is the link, or is at least the URL that you can cut and paste into your, um, you know, thing at the top of your internet screen. <laughs> um, I need to eat. Um, and I've also put the link in to my Instagram bio. So there's all those ways. I would love it if you could donate pound uh, or pledge a pound towards Bill's school and it would encourage me as well to stick up my sustainability and spend no money challenge for the next now 37 days. Uh, have a really lovely evening and I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to have my dinner, watch a bit of telly and do a bit of knitting. See you all tomorrow. This is what Henry has collected. Whilst I, ah, wait. Henry, come here. Hen, come on. Let's get that sticky off. Come here. Okay, I'm going to put the phone down now. Good boy. Good boy.